Hallo, willkommen bei Deutsch Info und Training. Mein Name ist Michael, mein name is Michael, and I'm here to help you improve your German. Today I'm going to talk about talking, because this is a very difficult point when it comes to learning a language, especially when it's not the first language that we learn as a child. Many people struggle with it, so let me try to give you maybe some other ways of looking at it that might help you. In today's video, I'm going to show you that it's possible and important to start talking right from the beginning. So from A1 onwards, you can talk and you should do it. Even if there's nobody at hand you can talk to. That sounds weird, huh? Well, wait and see. If you want to have more detailed information on this topic, you can also have a look at my other video about this. It should be somewhere here. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's here, up there. You can click on it. So, and now let's have a look how this is working, okay? Let's go. I started teaching 30 years ago. Yes, because I'm a dinosaur. Yeah, ich bin ein Dinosaurier. Ich bin ein Dino. And why am I telling you this? Back then, there was no internet, there were no mobile phones. And we were still alive, but of course it was totally different. Language learning was different. We had no apps, we had no online courses, no teachers online. Of course, there was no online. But something that has not changed over the years is that you struggle when you want to speak another language. And that has different reasons, of course, because everybody's different and everybody looks at it in a different way. But in general, I would say, we do not want to be regarded as oh, you cannot speak the language, or are you stupid? Why don't you, why don't you speak? Um, we do not want to make mistakes. This is never nice to, to make mistakes, right? We don't want that. Let me compare speaking a language to other situations. And I know comparisons are not always so ideal, because different situations are different, I know. But I think sometimes a comparison can show us a situation in a different light. We can get the possibility to look at it from a different angle, from another view. And this might help us to relax a little bit or to view it differently and take it a bit more easily. So let me talk briefly about driving a car and playing tennis. I remember very clearly, although it's some days ago, The first time I was sitting in a car. Oh my God, I nearly panicked. I mean, I was very young and there were three mirrors. Still, I had to look over my shoulder. There were three pedals down there for two feet. There was a steering wheel. I had to shift my gears and this was only the car. Then I had to look at the other cars and to watch out for children jumping on the street, people who cannot cross the street so quickly, animals maybe bicycle riders, motorbikes. What? I'm telling you honestly, back then I could not imagine how I would ever be possible to manage this, to drive a car. It was really, it seemed impossible for me. So many things to do at the same time. But then I thought, hey, wait a minute. Millions, millions of people are driving cars. So it can't be rocket science. I, I must be able to do this. I'm clearly not the brightest person on this planet, but I think I'm also not the dumbest. So I, I must be able to get this, right? And then I admit faster than it happens with the language, but still quite quickly, it was kind of smooth and I, okay, it came more and more natural and Okay, I can do this, I can do this. And I, I didn't even recognize that I didn't think about it so much anymore. I just did one thing after the other more and more naturally, and it came to me and it, it, it got into my system. I soaked it up. It was in my blood and in my bones, and then it was natural. And then I didn't have to think about it anymore, and it became pleasant and nice, and, and I liked it. And today I love driving a car, and I don't have to think at all. You know it. Everybody out there who drives a car knows what it is. You just get in, you do what you have to do, you take the 
belt and do the ignition. It's, it's natural. It's, you don't have to think about it, right? And the same, exactly the same thing happens when you master language. So let's now jump to the tennis court for a moment. When you take tennis lessons, right? You have a trainer. He tells he or she tells you how to stand, how to hold the racket, how to throw the ball, how to move your feet, because playing tennis is a lot of running, you know? There's so much running involved, back and forth, left and right. You have to anticipate the ball. Where will it hit the ground? How can I, can I hit it? How can I play it over the net, into the other part of the court? There's also a lot of, of thinking involved and a lot of precise movement. In the beginning, it, it's chaos. But when you take your lessons and when you listen to your trainer and you play a lot of balls, you hit them, you know, and some of them will land somewhere and lots of them will be in the net and not over it. But by training, by training and training, you get better and better and better. And you like it, the feeling when the ball hits your racket and you can smash it and it, it goes exactly where you planned it to be. This is great, great feeling. And it comes when you train. And I think it's quite clear that in both situations, driving a car and playing tennis, no one would expect to sit at home, read a book about how to drive a car, how to play tennis. And then when you finish the book, you think, oh, now I know everything. Now I can do it. Now I can drive the car. Now I can play tennis. I can play against a pro. I know, I know everything. I know how to do it. Of course you do. And in the language, you also know how to do it because you studied the grammar. Because what you do in language courses, let's be honest, most of the time is studying grammar. And of course it's important, very important. You know how to, to do it. You have to know the rules. But a lot of it is practice. And you cannot drive a car without practice. You cannot play tennis without practice. You cannot speak without practice. And now I have to tell you something that I, I think or I fear. 90% of the German teachers that you're going to ask will give you the same answer. When you ask them, tell me, how can I, how can I get to, to a better way of speaking? How can I practice? How can I, how can I do it? They will say, hey, the best practice for speaking a language is to speak it. There's no other way. There's no way around. If you don't speak, you won't speak. So what do I mean by this? If you don't speak, you won't speak. Well, let's assume you are on a B1 level or higher and you practice speaking. Then you won't have many problems going shopping, going to see a doctor, going to the pharmacy for some medications, going shopping like clothes or shoes. You can talk to the people at your bank or at governmental institutions. But what about being on a level of A1 or A2? You just started to learn German and you don't know a lot of grammar right now or all the sentence structures. You don't know a lot of words. And what if you ask a question? Would you understand the answer? You might be frightened or feel embarrassed if you don't understand anything. So that keeps you from going shopping and speaking German there, going to see a doctor on your own or to your bank. So what can you do if you still want and should practice? As I already said, it will not help you to say, oh, uh, first I'm going to study uh, and when I know all the grammar of B1 or even B2, um, then I start talking because then I know everything. No, this is what I mean by if you don't speak, you won't speak. If you don't speak today, you won't speak tomorrow. So what can you do? You take what you have and work with it. So if there is somebody in your surrounding who is willing and can talk to you in German and correct you and train with you, perfect. If not, you still have yourself. And this is not a joke. I'm completely serious with you now. You have yourself always, anytime, everywhere. So you take what you have and work with it. So what do we have in the beginning when we start to learn a language? 
what can we work with? If you work with yourself, as we've just said, you can ask yourself, welcher Tag ist heute? Heute ist Montag, der 25. September 2023. The next day you can ask yourself, welcher Tag ist heute? Heute ist Dienstag, der 26. September 2023. Ask yourself this question every day in the morning and answer it. And by doing so, you see what you are learning. It's not so simple and boring actually. You get to know the question. In the answer you see that the verb is on position number two because it's a main clause. You get to know the days of the week, the month of the year, the numbers. And what is always good to do, so in order not to be bored too much, try to find variations. Quite soon when you study German, you come across the accusative, right? So here you can have a nice variation and you don't always ask yourself, welcher Tag ist heute? You can also ask yourself, welchen Tag haben wir heute? Haben always with accusative. So, welchen Tag haben wir heute? Heute haben wir Mittwoch, den 27. September 2023. Then you can ask yourself questions, maybe not every day, but in the beginning and maybe in between, you can vary with the questions. Like, wie heißt du? Ich heiße Michael. Or you can have a variation, wer bist du? Ich bin Michael. Another variation would be, wie ist dein Name? Mein Name ist Michael. And you can ask yourself other questions like, wie lange lernst du schon Deutsch? Woher kommst du? Wie ist dein Familienstand? That would be single, married. Hast du Kinder? Hast du Haustiere? Was bist du von Beruf? Wo wohnst du? Wie alt bist du? Since you're talking to yourself, no question can actually be embarrassing, right? That's cool. Questions like this, very helpful. And then we also want to expand our vocabulary. We want to get to new new words. Yeah, We know we have this annoying der, die, das in German. So if it's annoying, let's make use of it for our advantage. We take three new nouns every day from our immediate surrounding, from our home or from what we need to get, was wir haben, was wir brauchen. Haben and brauchen always with accusative. So... You can say, was habe ich zu Hause? One word with der, one with die, one with das. Der Tisch, die Lampe, das Bett. Ich habe den Tisch, die Lampe, das Bett. Or you go shopping, what do you need? Ich brauche Käse, Milch, Brot. Ich brauche den Käse, die Milch, das Brot. These are just some examples, of course. But take this. You have different rooms in your home. You have so many pieces of furniture, dishes, glasses, cutlery, so many items at home. Look them up on the internet if you don't know the correct article so that you'll be sure you are correct when you're training. Find out what is there, D and does, and do this. It's always the same structure. Ask yourself, answer yourself. By doing so, you get a good feeling for the sentence structure. And this is a good basement. Yes, it's simple, but simple is good. You have a good foundation then that you can build upon the more complicated structure of grammar. This is very, very good. Do that on a daily basis. Take three new words with articles every day. You can also go for two rounds, two groups with three words. Not more than that. Our brain is not so happy when we put more than six or seven items at once that are new. So try to do this on a daily basis for a couple of minutes every day and you will see you get some security in speaking quite soon. Please don't forget also to like my video and to subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. Thank you for today. Danke für heute. Tschüss. Bye bye.